In a recent study, it was found that people from lower socioeconomic classes tend to display greater pro-social behavior than their higher class counterparts. In one part of the study, participants played a game with an anonymous partner. Part of the game involved sharing points with the partner. The lower economic class participants were significantly more generous with their points compared to the upper class individuals. Results similar to those found in the study show that N equals 12 lower caste participants. So that'll be our group one. Group one, lower class participants. So they had N equals 12 lower class participants, shared an average of M equals 5.2 points with a standard deviation of 1.04 compared to an average of m equals 4.3 with a standard deviation of 0 0.92 for the n equals 12 upper class participant. And that'll be our group two. And which one's group one and which one's group two is largely arbitrary. So we're also, the other pieces, um, are the data sufficient to conclude that there is a significant mean difference between the two economic populations? Use a two-tailed test with an alpha of 0.05. So step one of our hypothesis testing procedure we need to determine what are the hypotheses. What's the null and what's the alternative? The null always includes that there is no difference between the groups. And in this case, because it's a two-tailed test, that is that mu1 equals mu2. And remember that the hypotheses are always about the populations that the samples are coming from. The alternative is that they are not the same. And we can rewrite these. You don't need both of them. Um, but we can also write it as mu1 minus mu2 equals 0. And mu1 minus mu2 does not equal 0. So that's step one. We stated our hypotheses. Step two, we need to find our critical values. The critical values require that we know we have a two-tailed test, we need the alpha level, and we need our degrees of freedom. For an independent samples t-test, the degrees of freedom is n1 plus n2 minus 2, so that's 12 plus 12 minus 2, so 22. And if we look that up on a statistical table, looking at proportion and two tails combined, equals 0 0.05, and we look down to the row with 22 degrees of freedom, what we see is that our critical values, and we have two because it's a two-tailed test, is plus or minus 2.074. So what that'll look like if we draw it out, and I always recommend you draw it out, is like this. And anything that falls in these tails, that's going to be where we reject the null and accept the alternate. And anything in this middle area right here, we're going to fail to reject the null and we don't make any statement about the alternative hypothesis. Step three of the hypothesis testing procedure, because our, um, our sample sizes are the same, we can jump right into calculating the estimated standard error. Now the estimated standard error, the formula that we're going to use has variance, not standard deviations. So we've got to be careful. S squared is not the same as S. So we are going to take 1.04 we're going to square it and then divide by 12. And we're going to take the other, 0 0.92. We'll square that and then divide by 12. And then take the square root of the whole thing. So 
1.04 squared is 1.08. That still needs to be divided by 12. I right? haven't done that step yet. And then 0.92 squared is 0 0.85 and then we'll divide by 12. So what that looks like, 1.08 divided by 12 is 0 0.09, and 0.85 divided by, 0 0.85 divided by, and my calculator's doing funny business on me, right? Of course it is, 0.85 divided by 12 is 0 0.07. So then that is 0 0.07 plus 0 0.09 is the square root of 0 0.16, which is 0 0.4. So that's our estimated standard error. We're not done yet, but that's a good you know, start. What we now need to do is calculate the T. So if you recall though, mu one minus mu two, according to the null hypothesis is zero. So that zeroes out. The mean of group one was 5.2. The mean of group two was 4.3. And the estimated standard error that we just calculated was 0.4. So what that gives us is 5.2 subtract 4.3, which is 0 0.9, divided by 0 0.4, just 2.25. Then step four four of the hypothesis testing procedure, we're going to compare this value to our critical values. And I'm just gonna copy that distribution over that I drew in step two. Okay, and I'm gonna put this value on here, 2.25. It falls in this critical region. So we are going to reject the null and accept the alternate. I often like to show evidence. This can be evidence that you're not just guessing in the dark or 2.25 is larger, or more extreme than 2.074. And what this means is there is a significant difference between the behavior of the lower class participants and the upper class participants. A significant difference between lower and upper class participants. And in particular, it's that the lower class participants, which is 5.2, gave significantly more points than the upper class participants. And we know the direction of that difference because we can see the means and there's only two groups. I'm gonna pause here and then I will uh, record the effect size measures.